Good day to all of you. My name is Teacher Anna from IELTS Anna. So today I just want to focus on something simple, but something that is not so simple for many IELTS candidates of the academic module. So I'd like to focus on the top seven mistakes that students make in their writing task one. This is actually my second attempt to create a video, so pardon me, please. Okay, here it, here it is. So first, first mistake. Actually, uh, sorry, before I continue, I base uh, these observations on my writing correction oh, service. And although I see a lot of uh, lists of mistakes for writing SAS 1 online, these are my own personal uh, list. I'm sorry. This is my own personal list of uh, top mistakes. All right. So number one, paraphrase is ineffective. What does it mean? It simply means that when I see a paraphrase, there is still... Sorry, there's still something that needs to be improved on. Okay, now we need to understand, or candidates need to understand, what is a paraphrase? Um, the common definition that I see online, or when I ask my students, what do you understand in a paraphrase? They usually tell me that it's expressing something using your own words. Okay, but I remember back in high school <laughs> when I was uh, uh, still trying to learn the difference between a summary, a paraphrase, and a phrase. Um, there are features of a paraphrase. So here's one from um, I don't quite see it. Library dot uh, defiance dot edu skills something. <laughs> <clears throat> I'll write it down later. The four features of an effective paraphrase are number one should be original, number two accurate, number three objective, and number four complete. Okay, next. Okay. Here's a sample task. Uh, that I got from Cambridge IELTS or IELTS Cambridge 14. Um, if you zoom it, okay, the task says the charts below <clears throat> show the average percentages in typical meals of um, the three types of nutrients, all of which may be unhealthy if eaten too much. Okay, and they refer to average percentages of sodium, saturated fats, and added sugars in typical meals consumed in the USA. That's the title of the visual. It's called a visual because you see something, a picture, a diagram, pie charts, line graph, process, or a map in academic task one. Okay, now here is a sample paraphrase written by one of my students. <clears throat> um, uh, she is supposed to have taken the IELTS before, but um, I'm not sure how many times before me. And then she came to me, um, and this is my assessment. I gave her this task for her to answer. And uh, this, is, this is what she gave me. So I said, that this is a, an example of an ineffective paraphrase. And this is what she wrote. The charts illustrates, okay, that's with an S, the average uh, amount of sodium, saturated fats, and added sugars in typical meals consumed in USA. 
So there are a lot of things wrong here. Number one is the penmanship. Okay. Number two, it's not neat. See that? There's an erasure, so I actually recommend that my students use pencil. Um, in the Philippines, um, any number two pencil, like Mongol number two, uh, should be used. Why? It's not so dark, not so light, and when you erase it, it erases uh, neatly. And here is uh, an example of an effective paraphrase. The diagrams compare the mean amounts in percent of sodium, saturated fat, and added sugar, usually found in American meals, and whose excessive consumption may be dangerous to the health. It's effective, um, number one, because it, it covers all the essential details of the original. Okay, for instance, USA, American meals, usually, okay, typically found in. Okay, what else? Um, charts where uh, uh, it's expressed as diagrams. Uh, what else do we have here? And a lot more. And it's a good paraphrase to get a good band score in grammatical range and accuracy because it's expressed in a, in a complex uh, grammatical structure. That would be for another lesson. It's just number one. I'm trying my best not to say a lot <laughs> just about the paraphrase. So number two mistake. There is no overview. Or if there is one, it's not so clear. Okay, here's an example. So from the same student, she wrote in her assessment, overall, the figures show a quite similar trend. Number one, oh, sorry, let me, let me finish. Similar trend in these given types of nutrients. Despite of this fact, there are still some noticeable differences. Okay, number one, um, there are no dates mentioned, no years in the original, uh, in the question task. So we cannot really call it a trend. And then she says here, show a quite similar trend. I also do not understand what the word quite here means. In these given types of music, despite of this fact, all right, and she called it a fact, and yet I can't find that description in the question task, or I couldn't find it. There are still some noticeable differences. Now, you see, when you're writing an overview, um, although you are describing uh, key points in general, okay, you have to know what these points are. Now, here, just uh, this kind of description is applicable to any any task there are still some noticeable differences so in this case she did not uh, describe the gender uh, of the, the key points accurately okay so here's an example band 7 overview overall dinner has the highest content of sodium and saturated fat among other meals that Americans consume while breakfast is the lowest content of these nutrients. And if you're aiming for a higher band score, Here's a sample band aid overview. Overall, it can be seen that dinner has the highest amount of sodium and saturated fat, as well as a significant amount of added sugar. Snacks also have the most dangerous amount of added sugar, while breakfast is the safest amount of uh, safest amount 
of these nutrients above. We'll talk about the difference between band 7 and 8 in another presentation. Third mistake, skip the analysis or uh, the planning stage or both. Okay. Now, when I read a report, so task one is actually a report, it's not an essay. Um, I know when uh, the, the student or the candidate, oh, let's just call it student because I'm not IELTS, so I can't call them candidates <laughs> unless they've already uh, registered for the IELTS. Anyway, I know that they've skipped the very important step, uh, which is analysis and or planning. Why? Uh, it doesn't show, <clears throat> like in the example earlier, um, the overview doesn't show any evidence that uh, there was an in-depth analysis. Perhaps uh, a little analysis, but not in-depth. Okay. Uh, planning. Um, I sometimes also think that uh, perhaps the, the student did not plan at all, uh, especially the structure, because I can tell the, the structure just by looking at the, the report, and it's only 150 words or, or so. Analysis is very important because in this stage, you actually jot down notes, okay? Notes uh, on your observations. And they serve as a guideline for what to write on your report. All right. Fourth, fourth mistake. There are too many details or um, the student did not summarize the information. So as you actually, um, uh, if you go back to the question task, it says there that you have to summarize uh, and report only, uh, let me see if I remember, uh, report only uh, the, the, the key points. Am I correct? <laughs> the key points <coughs> or uh, the main points <coughs> and uh, yeah, report them by selecting and reporting only those that are important. Okay, there. I haven't even memorized. In my years of teaching IELTS, I haven't memorized um, how questions are, are, are phrased in, in IELTS. Okay. Anyway, number five. Complicated. 20 minutes. You only need to write 150 words. Do not, I always tell my students, do not complicate the task. You just describe what you see. Okay, what's the highest, what's the lowest, what's worth noting. Don't write sentences that attempt to compare <clears throat> and be complex with its uh, description. Don't, okay? And when I have students who do this, I tell them, you have such a complicated brain. Don't be such a masochist. Okay, don't try to hurt yourself. <laughs> it's more of a joke, really, but um, really, keep it simple. Okay, and you can tell when a student uh, did not proofread his or her work. Okay, uh, this task was written on, a, on our whiteboard, okay, which is Google Talk, and there I highlighted parts of the, the report which are ungrammatical and then I wrote my comments uh, based on the specific criteria. For instance here GRA refers to uh, grammatical range and accuracy. In particular the student made a mistake with SBA or subject verb agreement and then I also included there um, my suggestion. A better sentence. 
how do I commend the students for a job well done? So I said here in the next comment, good signal words. Okay. And so on. Here is a very grave mistake. And you will know why. Seventh did not count the number of words. How can you tell if you've written 150 words or so? You should count the number of words. Unless you, you, you're so used to writing on the question paper, uh, sorry, on the answer sheet, that you know, even without counting, that you have reached 150 words. All right? You see, it's another test-taking strategy that I teach my students. And this is a part of a... Uh, uh, this is what you see here. Examiners use only. It's a part of the answer sheet. Okay, and at the bottom, you will see the criteria, the individual criteria, and on the rightmost uh, bottom, you will see their under length and how many words penalty. So 149, I should say, uh, is missing one word. Okay, and uh, I got a tip before that uh, 149 words, one word missing is actually penalized a whole band score in task achievement. And then um, there's another mentor who told me that, no, not necessarily. Okay, I don't know. I'm not a previous examiner. I'm just a teacher, IELTS teacher who, who's been teaching IELTS for a long time. Okay, so just to be on the safe side, Let's write more than 150 words. Okay, I generally recommend 160 or so. All right. Huh. What else do I need to say? Anyways, here are some sample corrected reports. So definitely these are uh, task one academic. I can't zoom them anymore, but... Um, yeah, this is how they generally look. There's a question task, the visual. Um, so if you see lots of red there. <laughs> this was my old format, by the way. Okay, but anyway, it says here uh, that this is a work by a nurse in the Philippines, okay, who is now in the U.S. Uh, I initially assessed her to be at 6.5. And her actual writing band score was 7.5. Okay, there. I know for sure that most of my students who have um, availed of my writing correction services have uh, taken the IELTS multiple times. So this is not her first time. Here's another one. So earlier we had a a vertical bar graph now this one's a process this is my new format okay. uh, there I make comments I don't like lots of colors like purple for for this uh, criterion blue for this criterion yellow <laughs> because um, it's such an eyesore for me I'm so sorry I, I want to keep it um, at a minimum the, the amount of colors on each page. Okay, and then uh, this table, in this table, uh, you, uh, the student can see the band scores and the explanation, why uh, explanation and uh, some evidence or why uh, I awarded them uh, the individual band scores okay, for criterion. And then uh, I have a general comment somewhere here and uh, some useful tools and resources for the students to visit. Okay, this one it, uh, has two pie charts. Ah, these are all my students. Actually, I have more, but um, I don't have a picture of all of them. But if you want to know more about my writing correction service, okay, you may visit any of my social media accounts 
my website, Facebook account, Facebook group. Um, they're all linked to each other. <laughs> Uh, but generally, you can visit my Wix site today. It's not yet a .com as of making this uh, video or presentation, but I plan to make it a .com by January next year. So please support IELTS Anna. Visit courses.online.wixsite.com slash IELTS hyphen Anna. <coughs> And so, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, okay? Subscribe and like this video and